Hello Zwifters, welcome to another episode of How to Run on Zwift. A very short episode today in which we look at race results. I found out something new about race results on Zwift. Previously, I thought you had to go to zwiftpower.com to see a breakdown of A, B, C and D groups race results. But you don't. If we go to the Zwift Companion app, have a look at this. So I'm just going to click on my name here and then I'll go to my activities. Many of you, uh, it's it's February 2019, many of you will have taken part in the Zwift Watopia Run Festival this past weekend. I did, I ran the half marathon and if we go to my result here, look, now you can see I did, according to Zwift, I did 21 kilometres in one hour and 45 minutes. That's incorrect. What that is, is your entire time since you've pretty much logged on to Zwift. So once you're starting on the start line at Zwift, your entire activity time is taken into account. So one hour 45 is not my actual race result, it's my activity time. But if I click into that, you can see uh, my actual race result here. So I was in eighth place in one hour, 29 minutes and 37 seconds. But now what we can do is we can click on where it says race results. Click on that and it'll take you into the group A race results. So we can see Jan Jonker there won the race in one hour and eight minutes and I'm down there highlighted in eighth place in one hour 29.37 and that is all of group A. But look, you can now click on group B and see all of group B's race results and group C and group D. Do you know what? I did not know this before. I did not know this. Interestingly, you can also see power stats. So if you're running with a stride foot pod, a stride foot pod gives you power. So Verez in third place um, was generating uh, 251 watts of power. And uh, just in front of me, Tershamp was generating 264 watts of power. So I didn't know that either. So you can now actually see power results in Zwift. Previously, for all this information, you had to go to ZwiftPower.com. ZwiftPower would take all the race results from people who were registered with Zwift Power and who had opted in to allow Zwift to share that data with Zwift Power and you would see a breakdown of A, B, C, D groups and you would see the race results for those separate groups but now you can actually see it within the Zwift companion app itself and that's great, really good but it also does mean that you do need to be careful about what group you select when you're joining a race. So if you are racing on Zwift, if you're wanting to race people who are similar in ability to you, you do need to choose the right group. So if if you're right on the border, and this might be a problem for some people, if you're right on the border of groups A and B, then it's a difficult one to know where you're going to place yourself because you might say, well, I'll go in group A because it'll push me harder and I, you know, I'll try harder because I'll try and keep up with the group A runners. But you will come towards the bottom of the list in group A. But if you join group B, you might win group B. That being said, there has been a recent poll on the Zwift Runners Facebook page to say we should do away with the groups A, B, C and D in races. In the real world, we don't have those delineations of groups. We might have age groups, uh, but we don't have pace groups. Um, and so many people have suggested that what we should be doing is getting rid of those groups and just having a mass start with everybody in the same group. So it'll be interesting to see in the future what Zwift do about race results, whether they do continue to break them down into groups A, B, C or D, or whether we have mass start and a, a group E, for example. That's it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and we'll see you for another How to Run on Zwift very soon.